All right. Welcome to the first episode since we've rebranded. And welcome to the Nosebleeds. Adam Schmidt. Hi. I'm Chris Witt. Good to see you again, sir. Good to see you as well. Yeah, it's been about a week and a half. Uh, took a little bit of a break here. Tournament's over. Uh, we finally came up with a name, and the name is the Nosebleeds. It's the Nosebleeds because... That's a sports reference, um, an old sports term, a cliche really, but that's okay. But th the reason it works for us is because we each have prominent noses. Prominent. Prominent being the nice way to tell somebody they have a large nose. Right. Um, so that's why it works for us for this podcast. Um, also, I mean, you know, if we're if you or I are uh, – are buying tickets to a game. We're, uh, we're more than likely buying nosebleeds. Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. more than likely because we can't afford anything else. Right. All right, so we're going to get into uh, to some things today. We're going to talk a little Major League Baseball, uh, get into the NBA playoffs. I got a little fun thing I'm going to do with you, a little rapid fire, get oh, to know Adam Schmidt gosh. today. I can't wait for it, and I'm sure the fans, all of our fans cannot wait to hear all about me. All the fans, yes, all the fans <laughs> can't wait. So, um Anyway, like I said, he's Adam. I'm Chris. We're cousins. Uh, this is the Nosebleeds podcast, and we're going to talk some sports. So, uh, Adam, we're a week in to the Major League Baseball season. Tell me, what is your first thought about the – what's the craziest thing that's happened so far? What are you excited about? Uh, there really aren't. I don't think there are a lot of surprises. Um, Boston started eight and one. That's not that big a surprise. I didn't know um, if they were ever going to lose. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, Pittsburgh's seven and two. That's, I think that's a surprise, but I, I don't think that's sustainable for them. I don't think they're that good. Yeah. Um, but the, the one thing that jumped out to me the most and, and, you know, mostly because there was so much hype surrounding Shohei Otani, um, the, Shohei, Japanese, the twenty-three-year-old Japanese uh, star that uh, is in his rookie season in the major leagues this year. Um, he is the he's a hitter and a pitcher. How much fun is that? It's he's doing things that nobody's done since Babe Ruth, and it, you know, they called him the Japanese Babe Ruth. And now he's literally done things that nobody's. He was the first player to ever uh, was it hit a home run and pitch in the same and get a win in the same game or something. No, not I'm sorry, to hit it. Two home runs and get a win in the same week. Yeah, yeah, right. Since uh, Babe Ruth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he so he's you know, uh, I didn't think that he would be great at both, but he has been now very small sample size. He's hit in four games, sure, and he's pitched in two. He started two games, so really small sample size. Maybe he ends up being the worst player in Major League history, but right now he's the best player in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I mean he's got a two point eight ERA, dudes. I mean he's he's. I think what I want to know is is he going to give up more home runs than he hits, or is he going to hit? More home runs than he gives up. Yeah, I think he's only given up one so far. He's given up one, and he's got three bombs. He's, he's I believe got, he's got three in four games. In in nineteen plate appearances, he has three home runs, seven RBIs. Three hitting three eighty nine. I mean, this dude's killing it now. He's brand new to the big leagues. They're gonna get a book on him. Both sides of the plate, uh, at the plate and on the mound. Right. But how, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm love. I love every second of this. The re the biggest reason I love this is because from the beginning. When the Reds drafted Hunter Green, the first thing I thought of was this dude can play shortstop for the Reds. Mm -hmm. And then when the game's, you know, in the brink in the ninth inning or whatever, he can come in and be their closer. He's got that electric 101 mile an hour fastball electric stuff. And then say he bring him in and it's a tie game and he holds it. You don't have to take him out of the game. You put him right back at shortstop. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would love to see something like that. Um, no way they do it because of the yeah, way they right. people throw in arms. But I hate I hate that because I think that that would be so much fun. Yeah, it would be fun, and and because you don't see you know uh, Joe Madden like moves moves guys around and uses pitchers in the field sometimes and stuff like that. But really, nobody does stuff like that, and you, they don't use uh -huh. now, now. There have actually already been three or four position players that have pitched in games this yeah, year. Yeah, the Phillies got a guy, but but it's not a regular thing. No. It's because games are out of hand or whatever. They you know they ran out of bullpen, but. 
you know that, that you're right though. It, it would be very fun to see oh, him play a position, come in, uh, pitch pitching or two in relief or whatever, and or or, or you know, uh, however they want to use him. But it would be really fun to see, even if he's just the Shohei Otani. If, if he's a pitcher, yeah, the way and they then do on it. days off, he can hit. Yeah, well, and Otani is uh, he's hitting. Uh, so the day he pitches and the day after he pitches, he will not hit. Right. Or is it the day before and the day after? I think it's the, I think it's both maybe. Yeah. And then he'll, so he'll hit on the other. So I, dude, I love it. I can't wait to see this dude play more. Um, I can't, I wish the Reds would do this with Hunter Green or yeah. find a way to do it because the kid's good. Yeah. I mean, his first start down there, I mean, he only, I think he only threw 50 pitches, but you know. Struck a bunch of guys, struck a few guys out. He, he had eight, hit 101 a few times. Eight strikeouts in three Was innings. Was it eight? I thought it was eight, five. Eight, eight strikeouts eight, That's in three awesome. Innings. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the kids, this is going to be fun. They got to find a way. They, they, he could have been the number one draft pick as a shortstop. Right. Easily. Yep. And, they're, I mean, this is – I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. There's, You'll never see him in the field, I don't think, unless yeah. – but uh, at least in the in the National League – He'll get to hit every five days. Yeah, yeah, and that's – look, and even if that's all he, he does, even if that's all they use him for, that's fine. That's fine. It, uh, you know, but he'll get to hit. And there there have been, there have been a few uh, a few pitchers that are that were really good hitters, but he'll be another level, I think. I need to get – we need to get Adam a new microphone. <laughs> Adam's got <laughs> – Adam has tape on his microphone right now, it's and pain. he pulls it up. He's got painter's tape holding his microphone to a mic stand, and as he lifts it up, it just slowly falls down. And he's t- his head, he lifts his head up when he pulls it up, and as it slowly goes down, he moves his head down with it. Oh I'm, like, my gosh, I'm like moving hilarious. my head down in between my shoulders like a turtle <laughs> <laughs> to try to keep my mouth in front oh of this gosh. microphone because this is a so really great. cheap like karaoke microphone or something like Literally that. Literally is a karaoke microphone. It has a, it has a remote control on the microphone so you can switch things. That's all right, though. We're going to get him a mic like this. This, and is, be this is the last podcast with this microphone. We're, we're making an upgrade. Super excited. All right, that sounds good. Uh, so tell me tell me what else you like about this uh, about this red season. Is there anything good that's going to come that's going to come to these reds this there, year? What's going to come out of this season? There will be because there always are. No matter how bad the team is, you still have Joey Votto to watch every day. You still have there's usually one or two pitchers that that do all right, and that you know right now, look, their starting pitching stinks right now. Their bullpen stinks right now, but there are like three guys pitching out of the bullpen that individually aren't aren't doing bad at all right now. Sure, um, Amir Garrett is one that we talked a lot about in the last podcast Love that we were me. both excited about, and he's he's been their best pitcher I think out of the bullpen. So far, and um, so I mean, I would rather see him start. Yes, but if he's going to be this effective out of the bullpen, go ahead. Keep yeah, him there. That's fine. I, I I agree. I, I I'm going to tell you though, before we get off Amir Garrett, uh, in that pitching staff, I hate Homer Bailey, but he's been the only consistent starter we've had so far. Yeah, he's been okay. Yeah, um, and uh, he started tonight, right? He did. He did, and I don't. I'm I'm not positive because he gave up one. Run. He, he only had only given up one run through five. So I, I know that the Reds were losing. Now I don't know if those were his runs or if they yeah. were. We 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 came down to the dungeon right. to do this while they're still playing. So yeah. they lost six to one. So it may have been the bullpen, and if it was, no surprise. But um, but anyway, they yeah. I, so Homer Bailey's been all right um, as a starter. Um, Luis Castillo has been a little bit disappointing because I think we thought he was going to be, but he's still really that young. Kid, that I mean, kid's got an electric arm. He'll be right, fine. I'm not right. worried about him at all. You know, you know who we talked about a lot. And I just want to bring it up just for – just talk for a second. So, I'm watching – we got a new nine-hole hitter. Mm-hmm. We don't we don't bat a pitcher in the nine-hole anymore. We have uh, the next coming of Joe Madden – or Tony, Tony La Russa, La Russa. sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and, and Brian Price. And he's putting Billy Hamilton in the nine-hole. Now, he stole a couple bases today. And he got on twice yesterday. And I'm going to tell you, he knocked the cover off the ball. Neither ball, I think, got past the pitcher. Thank God he's fast. And that's exactly why I made such a case for him because all he's got to do is hit it on the infield grass. It doesn't even have to make it to the infield dirt, and he's beating balls it's out. It's better off when he doesn't hit the ball hard. I'm f- you're, you're If right. he can figure out a way to miss and hit the ball on the ground every time, I'm fine with it. The problem is 80% of his outs are pop-ups. 
Yeah, and that's a problem. You know what else he did? I'm yes. sorry. You know what else he did? Fifty percent of his outs are pop ups. Forty percent of his outs, or the other fifty percent, are strikeouts. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know what else he did yesterday? Uh, one of the times he got on base, he he laid down an almost perfect punt. Congratulations! That's the one you. I hope everybody saw it, and I hope you recorded it. Because it's the only one he's going to have all year. I did. I, I put a, a tape in the VCR before the game started, and I recorded the whole game. Yes. VHS, VHS or beta? On VHS. VHS? Okay. Yeah. I still have a beta. i got to figure out a way to – for you young kids, this, this thing is older than I am. But. Yeah. If anybody needs a copy on VHS of the game last night, the Reds game last night, um, just email me at P.O. Box 7171. Um, mail now. You, yeah. You got, P, you got an email? Uh, email? Well, yeah. yeah, but I can't send a VHS tape through email. You said email. Oh, you email you. Oh, and, yeah, and, no, and, just and, mail. Yeah, just, just mail. send them out. Yeah, P.O. Box 7171, um, James Madison Road. Uh, East Fork, uh, Ohio. Yeah, East Fork, yeah, Ohio. There you go. Why not? Yeah, I, that I, sounds for, good. I forgot which post forgot, office I was using. which post for, office you used. For that P.O. Box. <laughs> um, but so anyway, anyway, yeah, I'll, yes. I'll mail you one. I'll mail you a copy. I got to take it over to the... Uh, video store that makes copies from vhs oh no VHS. don't do that i have the double vhs oh uh, it's a, it's yeah, i'm gonna go pick it up from the vhs store tomorrow so don't do that oh I, it's in the I, repair shop it's in the repair shop okay so uh it, it, as we said you recorded billy's first ever bunt i think he's ever first laid down ever. career i'm i'm being a little facetious but at the same time you can't you gotta admit he tried to bunt. I think I watched him bunt four or five times in the spring, and he popped three of them up, and the other two were directly back at the pitcher. Yeah, he, he so, look. He's hitting under the Mendoza line, and his his on base is probably under the Mendoza line as well. And he, you're right. Mostly, he's not getting on base. I was excited when he was on base yesterday because he did steal. He stole a base yesterday. I think a couple of days before that. And if he had a couple today, then then maybe he's getting going a little bit. And he's getting going. He's getting. And, and, He's getting going batting 190. But that's and that's exactly my point. He can get going batting 190 and be more effective than any other player in the game that bats 190 and gets on base 20% of the time. I disagree. And I now that he's hitting now that he's hitting ninth, it doesn't matter that he's in the leadoff spot, which is probably overrated anyway. But one hundred percent I the biggest thing for me was that he wasn't in the leadoff spot. I can't stand him in the leadoff spot because yeah. the most important inning in a baseball game is the first inning. If you can score in the first inning, I don't know what the numbers are. I wish I had him in front of me, but I'm not very good on a iPad, so I can't look him up. But I'm I, I want there is definitely an advantage if you score in the first inning to winning the game. So Yes, you need those first three guys to be guys that are going to get on base. And Billy just doesn't do it now. When he does, he runs all over the place, and it's fun. And today he stole second. There's a bait with two outs. He stole second with two outs. Duvall or um, Winker, somebody had a base hit and and scored him. So yeah, it 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 worked. He's also playing the same. You know, the same center field that he's played the last three years when he was a, a finalist for the Gold Glove every year. Hey, and if he's getting going right now and he's this great defensive player, then dag on it, let's get something for him. It sounds like he's right on top of his game. I just love – if you get rid of him, you don't have much speed on this team at all. I mean, it's not going to matter ultimately because they're not ready to win, really. They're not ready to really be competitive anyway. But so yeah, okay. Maybe. When the Cubs won the World Series, what kind of speed did they have? Dexter Fowler was he? He wasn't even on that World Series. He was gone by the time they they two years ago. Yeah, two years ago he was he was with the Cardinals at that point. I think maybe he was on that team. Either way, what they, so they had one guy who who won the World Series last they year. They had okay speed. Who was their second baseman? Um, uh, was it Last? Uh, wasn't Lastella? Wasn't Happ? I don't think. Oh, Russ Addison Russell and. Uh, uh, Oh, Russell's gosh. quick. All right, so uh, maybe that was bad, but but I'm just yeah. well, my, the point is is I don't think you need speed to win. I think that it's fun, but I'd rather see you on base than running around like a crazy person. Yeah, I, I breaking your thumbs and everything else that he's done. You'll ge- look. I don't know how many more, but you will generate more runs with really good speed, um, just because you know uh, guys can go first to third and second to home a lot easier you know guys like billy hamilton speed and even not even that that fast but you know some of the faster guys in the league i agree i agree you you're you're completely right but you have to be on base to run around them 
Right. If you're not on, you can't run around them. I get it. But if you're if you're on, <laughs> like we like we talked about last time, uh, if you're on even twenty percent of the time, that's worth more than and and you have some speed. That's worth more than almost anybody else getting on base at that same rate, because you're going to score more often, even just being on that much than anybody else in the league being on that same amount of time. Lift your microphone up because I disagree with you. <laughs> There it is. Yeah, there wanna, it is. Listen, hold on. I'm going to do it again because I want you to listen closely and hear the painter's tape moving around on the microphone that's supposed to be holding it up in the first place. There it is. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. So Billy Hamilton shouldn't be on this team is basically what we got out of that, correct? Uh, we agree on that? <laughs> yeah, 100% not agree. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I, I, look, I, look, no, I, I, I don't completely disagree with that. If, if he gets going – and he makes himself valuable for even a small amount of time, I still don't think they're going to get a ton for him. But if they can get something, if they can get another pitcher or whatever. Or... What's getting going for him is, is, is two, I, I'd say 250. He's hit, if he's hitting 250, sure. try to get rid of him. If he's hitting 250 and he's getting on base at least 30% of the time. That's not going to happen. He never gets like, He's never gotten on base like that ever in his I career. Th- I think he has. We'll look it up. Yeah. We'll anyway. look it up. All right. So before we before before we uh, before we get off of this, is there anything else you you think about these Reds? I mean, Vado uh, is Vado. Peraza is not doing what we thought. They mm-hmm. they can't bring Senzel up until was it April fourteenth or whatever because that's the the deadline to where they get one more year for, for out of him, right. uh, one more year of control out of him. So you won't see him for the next week. Mm-hmm. But that's not that far down the road. Right. Um, and they moved him back tonight. They moved him in AAA. This is only his fifth game in AAA, but this is this will be his first at third base. He's been playing second base down there. Right. But since uh, since Suarez got hurt, uh, that's why. That's the reason he would come up at this point in time yeah. with Suarez being hurt. Uh, but is he going to be the shortstop of the future? Then is he going to get some games there? Are they going to give Peraza his chance because he's not. He's looking worse than Billy Hamilton right now. Right. And and he. You know what? He hit second in the lineup tonight. So I mean, as mu- as much as we want to complain about Billy Hamilton being in the leadoff spot, you got to say the same thing about. I uh, do. About, I yeah. do say the same thing. The right, difference yeah. is, I gave Billy five years. I loved Billy Hamilton. This is the first year I've been against Billy Hamilton. Mm-hmm. For the last five years, I've wanted him so much to be good. After five years, dude, you're you're hitting your you're hitting the back of your baseball card. That's just the end of it. You're done. That's the that you are what you are unless you start juicing, uh, or D Gordon who got in trouble for juicing. So. I, I just I don't think that that's I think he is where he is. Peraza, young. I, I give him another couple of years, or at least this year, minimum at least this year, uh, to show something. Yeah, uh, Billy Hamilton's career on base is two ninety eight. Yeah, two ninety eight. Two ninety eight, which is which is what this year, which is so, which is below three hundred. But is that correct? But that's including the two seventy six this year. Dude, you could. I so, guarantee it was the exact same before the seven games they've played this year. That, how, there, there's, uh, I don't think that's a big enough number to, to have switched anything up. Yeah, probably not. But he's right about three hundred. On base, which, uh, look, isn't good by most measures. But I, by any I, measure, it's not good by any measure. But, not most. So you're trying to make it sound not that bad. No, but, it's not good by any measure. But. It's not good by most measure because, but it's better. It's better for him because because his speed when he is on means a lot more than anybody else getting on base. Okay, that's I don't know. I that's, agree that's with my, the speed when you're on base, but the problem is, is like we said, you have to be on base, and I don't care who you are. There is no measure that's two ninety eight on base percentage is any good. Anyway, all right. I, I've had enough of the Reds. I can't think. Of, I can't talk about them anymore. It makes my head hurt. They're, by the way, with that loss tonight, they're two and eight now. Two and eight, kicking. They are just rolling right through this National League. Um, so real quick, uh, you know, this is our first podcast being rebranded as the rebranded. I like that. I don't know, I'm gonna yeah. use that. Re, being rebranded that as sound good? the Nosebleeds uh, Sports Podcast. So. I think everybody would like to get to know Adam a little bit. Yeah, I I totally disagree. I think no one would like that. But 
Yeah. Let's go I ahead. Got, and I got shoot some for questions it. for you. We're, okay. we'll, we'll do rapid fire just so you can. We'll, we'll get these going real quick. All right. right. We're a, just gonna a, do this real quick. Then we'll jump into the NBA playoffs. Yeah, a slow-minded person answering rapid fire questions. Perfect. Slow-minded person asking rapid fire questions. <laughs> this could get even better. Maybe this will be good. Okay. Right. What did you have for dinner today? Holy smokes! Uh, uh, mozzarella cheese sticks from La Rosa's. Wow. Gosh, you do not eat anything that's good for you ever, do you? Never. And you are like the physical specimen. Eh, and really. uh, LeBron or MJ? MJ. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah. Uh, Daisy Dukes or yoga pants on a woman? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, um, uh, gosh. Okay, ready? Hold on. Daisy Dukes or yoga pants? <laughs> I, 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 do you know? How, do you know how rapid fire works? <laughs> <laughs> I told you, a slow-minded, a slow-minded person answering. I don't know. I guess maybe uh, yoga pants seem to be more popular there you these go. days. So maybe I'll just say that. So you see more of them, so they're you definitely better. There you go. All right. Uh, right now, where are the toenail clippers at your house? In my medicine cabinet. Oh, it's got to be so great to be a single guy and know right where your toenail and fingernail clippers <laughs> are at all times. Really? I have no idea. I search my house for like thirty minutes. Or 40 minutes whenever I have to clip my fingernails or toenails. I never know. Or I'll find the toenail clippers when I don't need them. I just need to, the fingernail clippers. And then I'll find only the fingernail clippers when I need the toenail clippers. Look, you can make both happen with either one, really. Nah, dude, need I, I need some toenail clippers for them things down oh, there. Oh, uh, dude, I got, they get, they, they get at some big. Well, here's the deal. I don't clip my toenails every time you clip your fingernails. Sure, right. Because they grow at like a one one hundredth speed of your fingernail so sure. i i uh, by the time it gets to the point i'm like well i haven't cut them in six months anyway i just let them keep going <laughs> next thing i know i got cat claws down there oh mongoose God. nails and you're walking around on the hardwood floor with no socks on and you can hear them clicking. i climb i can climb the tree in the backyard with <laughs> oh just my, my feet God. <laughs> it's awesome that's foul no no i keep my toenails trimmed they look good uh all right last question Ice cream or Skyline? Ice cream. There you go. All right, that's Adam Schmidt. Hey, that's Adam Schmidt. And that yeah. is our game show of rapid fire that Adam is terrible at. <laughs> uh, get used to it. We are. All right, so on that note, let's get into the NBA playoffs, man, because we are right around the corner. We got one game, uh, one day of basketball games left tomorrow. They're playing today and then tomorrow, and then we're on. So the playoffs are basically set at this point in time. Uh, you know, there, there, there's possibility for slight movement, but at this point in time, I think we're, we're pretty well know what we're going to get. If you ask me personally, the most fun uh, first-round playoff games – is set up for this Golden State Warrior Oklahoma City Thunder matchup, which still to this point I don't know if, if Minnesota wins tomorrow and Gold and Oklahoma City loses. There's always a chance that I don't know how the tiebreakers work, but there's a chance those could flip. But let's just have fun and say Russ versus KD with Steph out for the first round. Okay, so I think team wise. It's it's probably not that still not that great. I want it to be a seven game series and every game goes into triple overtime, um, and I want to see Russell Westbrook because I think if, if if I had to choose a favorite player in the league, if I absolutely had to, I'd probably say Russell Westbrook. But are you kidding me right now? For real? No, I'm I'm serious. Yeah, you like Russell Westbrook better than you like LeBron James. Yes. Oh, I, there's is it okay. Yeah, I, I just enjoy watching him play more. Um, he, I, I love LeBron James, but Russell Westbrook is the most exciting player in the league to me pretty easily with, with I think, Steph up there too. Steph much. is fun to watch. I love wa just watching Steph. LeBron is starting to get that, uh, that not old man, but that like, like KD. KD used to, you could, you could turn on an old Oklahoma City game and he'd score 30 points and you'd only see 10 of them. Yeah, LeBron's starting to get that way for me. Yeah, they they're almost and they're probably the two best players really in the world, but they're almost almost predictable or something. I don't know, maybe not, but it it's, comes easily to them. It does. The, the, it, the points come easy. They're so so it, so it's it natural. Just, yeah, I think we're so used to seeing those guys do kind of whatever they want, um, especially LeBron, the way he affects the entire game. 
um, it's just it, it kind of gets I don't know it just and there's only one other person in the NBA that really affects an entire game like that well maybe two besides LeBron and that's Harden and Westbrook when it comes to an all the all around game I mean those guys are involved in those three guys are involved in every single play of every single game yes yeah at least on the offensive end yeah and and Russ when he wants to play defense can be pretty tough and LeBron when he wants to play defense can be pretty tough. And James Harden doesn't want to play defense, but he's so good offensively. Now, now Houston has been playing very good defense yeah. here lately, and Harden has been looking actually pretty good over the last two weeks yeah. when, when they've played good competition. Not when they're when they're playing the you know the the Phoenix Suns of the world or the or the Grizzlies or whatever. But when they play good competition, they are. I've seen him a couple times playing very hard on defense. Yeah, and look, they they know that when the playoffs start, especially. Their defense, their intensity, their their defensive effort has to go up, and it's it's. I think it's going to, you know, James Harden. You can look at all the YouTube videos of him just standing and watching the ball and letting a guy, you know, cut behind him or whatever, and just, just so not, he can take off back down the right other side or, of the court. or or playing that Olay defense on the ball or whatever. But, um, but yeah, it's it's, but that aside, he's so exciting offensively. And and those other two guys you mentioned are so exciting offensively. It's you know they're just, that's just fun to watch. But anyway, um, you know you mentioned Russ versus KD. I I love that, and I usually don't care about the all the you know drama between players and stuff. But that one's fun to me because I I, I, I was I was such a OKC fan when those two were together there, and I wanted them to be together their entire careers. And of course, it wasn't going to work, and it couldn't work. But um, um, but th- it's been fun to watch when they've gone against each other in the regular season the last the last year last year I guess yeah um, and then in the in the All Star game playing together in the All Star game and and the interaction they had they were kind of forced to have yeah um, that's just been kind of fun to watch for me because um, I want them to get to to get you know together again and I don't you know but they're so they're huge competitors. And they had a, a little thing, you know, for a while. And I don't think it's as big as, as everybody made it out to be. But, but, and I think it's smoothed over a little bit now. But still, when they get on the court, if they play each other in the playoffs, oh, yeah. it's going way it's up. It's going down. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And, and Russ will be the one that gets at it. He'll instigate a little oh, bit. Oh, my God. I love he He's, I don't know that he likes anybody in the NBA. I'm not sure if he actually. Even likes anybody on his team. I don't know. Maybe you know. I take that back. I think he really likes Stephen Adams. Yeah, I, he the, probably he, likes Nick Collison too. I would guess. Everybody likes Nick Collison. He's the somehow that dude's still around. He's the only guy, right? From the yeah, uh, from the original Super Sonics team. Sonics, How can you yeah. not like that? Every time he scores, they act like it's the greatest thing in the world. He right. scored a bucket the other day. The whole place went nuts because he plays like a minute and thirty seconds a game now. Nobody must remember. The Nick Collison old, he used to score all the time. Yeah, he was very good. He was, he was a good player for a while. <laughs> very good. Uh, yeah. So, all right. So, I I think that's gonna be. I think that's gonna be a blast. I think that's fun. Now, the depth of these two teams, because when you get off the starting five, uh, that's where you're gonna lose it. But okay. with that, I mean, it's Oklahoma City is deep, but they're not as deep as they have been in the past. Right. Yeah. And and Golden State. They they've been dealing with some injuries lately, and Steph's still out, and he's probably going to miss this first this first round. But Clay Thompson just came back, um, and they've had a couple of reserves um, that have dealt with some injuries too. But they're still really deep. They're still they're veteran heavy, um, and, and they're they still play that same style of basketball. They haven't been as dominant this year as they were in the past. But I think they they they've turned it down. I, the yeah, a lot like Villanova did in the tournament. They could turn it down and turn it up whenever they want. Right. They are one of those teams, and and I think they're I think they're probably still the best team in the way. Probably still the best team in the league. But I think they're gonna have to to go back to the finals and win a championship. They're gonna have to be healthy. Steph's gonna have to be back. Everybody's gonna have to play. Yeah. But um. But at least this first round against OKC, I still think they're certainly the better team, and I think they're going to win in five or six games. Honestly, I, I, I man, I hope that That's OKC sick. beats them because that makes uh, LeBron's path a little bit easier. Because I think, <laughs> I think Cleveland. I, I told you to begin with. I think Cleveland's going to win another one. I said Houston would be in it with them. This would help Houston's case. Yep. Uh, however, real quick, uh, another rapid fire: uh, Javale McGee or Zaza Pachulia. Oh my gosh! How much does that suck? I guess Javale McGee. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I think I take Javale <laughs> McGee. I think. 
Oh god, that's that's a bad that's a bad. Careful, question. careful. Good thing you didn't say Zaza, because because McGee's mom would have came at you probably on Twitter <laughs> like she did a Shaq. Here, here's here's what here's what would even be a worse question. Zaza Pachulia, JaVale McGee, new Cleveland Cavalier Kendrick Perkins. Oh, KP, dude, that's easy. KP, without a doubt. Oh, I take Kendrick Perkins over both of those clowns. My, my, K- Kendrick my, Perkins come out. He comes out with a he, that dude. I'm taking him because he scares me. My most disliked player, uh, certainly of this era, probably. Wow, Not ever. Really? Bill Ambeer has to be ever. But Kendrick Perkins, oh boy, do I not care for him. All right, so what about Charles Oakley? I I care. I, I couldn't stand Charles Oakley. Couldn't stand Anthony Mason. Couldn't stand the Knicks. You're, that you're just not a. You don't like the the. You, you'd rather see basketball. I, I don't want to see the enforcer. I don't want to see the guy that goes out there and plays football against a bunch of basketball players or whatever. A uh, guy that gets into the let Matt me, Barnes. The guy that's gonna let me tell you something. Foul you really hard and then cuss at you afterwards or yeah. whatever. Here's the thing though, I'm sick and tired of watching NBA fights. They're terrible. I'm sick they're, of it. They're a joke. I need Kendrick Perkins in the playoffs because if somebody wants to mouth off to him, there's no mouth and back. He's just going to turn around and pop somebody. And that's more Charles Oakley. I, but I feel like KP's that old school kind of guy. I, I, he might be. He probably wouldn't do that because he knows he's going to get tossed or whatever. But that's why I hope he does it so that he gets ejected and, and you don't have to watch him and misses a game or whatever. So I don't have to watch him. I, I If he gets on the court, I don't. If he, get, if he plays – Minutes for the Cavs in the playoffs. The Cavs aren't going to win the the, the finals. I tell you, they're, they're I, I disagree. I there. think that if he plays, that means that they are beating the brakes off of teams, and that they'll, that they'll be fine. If he gets in in garbage minutes because they're up thirty, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not going to play any other time. There's absolutely no I reason sure for him to hope play. not. Unless they he it, he is six fouls. That's all he is. Yes, he he's is. six fouls. Yeah, he's it, six it, fouls in about four minutes. Well, that. That's probably correct. But. All right. So anyway, uh, let's go on. So speaking of Cleveland, at this point in time, where they are, the, they're going to be uh, fourth in the in the uh, in the East. Right. So, um, so what do you think? Is this a is this a Cleveland team that is destined for failure, or is this a team that has the opportunity to really do something? Boston, Kyrie's out for Boston. He's done. Uh, I, and to be honest, that that kills the Celtics. No, no Kyrie, no um, Gordon Haywood, Hayward. Right. They're done. The Raptors, as I've said in the past, I got to see it to believe it because in the playoffs, they just can't do anything against Cleveland, which at this point in time uh, could happen faster than they would want because it could be the second round. Right. Yeah. Um, I think Cleveland's still the best team in the East. Um, even though they're the fourth seed, uh, they had a really weird up and down year. They changed their roster twice. Yeah, twice. Um, but I, I, I still think they're the best team. They, they have the best player, um, and I think they're going to figure it out in the playoffs. They're going to figure out how to win three series and get to the, get yeah. to the finals. But um, because they have LeBron James, because they have LeBron James, and because they have some other good players too. They because because he's going to make sure, and Tyloo's going to make sure that they're playing. The right way exactly. in the playoffs. LeBron, they they have another head coach, and Tyloo's good coach, but they have another guy out there, and and LeBron, he understands. I don't know that he likes Kevin Love and that whole Kevin Love and all that other garbage that goes down. Kevin Love, poor guy, gets blamed for everything, and then if he's not there, he gets blamed again that right. he's the reason they're losing, whatever. But LeBron knows when he's there, Love needs to score, and he does. I mean, Love is a all star yeah. when he's on the court. Yeah. With LeBron and without him, that team is is uh, well now they're nothing. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Kevin Love's been really good lately, um, and uh, he as long as he as long as he continues to play he the play the way he's played into the playoffs, um, and and they get contributions. Uh, even uh, even uh, Kyle Korver has has played really well. I mean, he, it's about time because he struggled. He did for a while, and I like Kyle Korver. Yeah, but but even you know, and all you need is him to shoot the ball. I mean, and he's that's not, all he's he, doing. That's he's, not he's a, a spot up shooter. Yeah, he's he's not, he's not a horrible defensive player like I think you would expect him to be too. But but as long as you know he and J.R. Smith are, are you know hitting shots and 
Um, and then you've got the um, you know the young guys, the young athletic guys playing, Larian's playing well, and, and, yeah, and, and the guys like that, right, yeah. contributing, you know, rebounding the ball and stuff like that. They, uh, you know, I, I think Cleveland's still the best team now. Philadelphia's playing the best basketball right now in the East. I was just going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right now. I think this is, I think Cleveland's got this year again, next year, and for a long time to come, as long as they can keep these guys together, the process worked. This, <laughs> it did. I got cold chills, dude. This. <laughs> Philly team is fun. They got the most polarizing guy in basketball and Joel Embiid who just loves to get out and make all kinds of controversy and loves it and, and has yeah. fun with it, which is how it should be. It, sh- it should just be a joke. You're playing basketball for a living. Don't take yourself so seriously, everybody in basketball. <laughs> I was going to say KD. I'm, but I'm on the fence about that, but yeah. I, I, you he, don't like he that? Be fun. He, no, I'm on the fence about it. Why? Tell me what puts you on the fence because I think that's a blast. I think you're in the NBA. Have some fun. Call other people out. He's doing it as a – I mean, it's in fun. He's not – actually calling people out and saying they it's, it, it's mostly in fun sometimes it can come across maybe as trying to troll people or trying to it's exactly what he's trying to do he right. wants it to come across like that but, because but, but it also becomes like a circus act and now he's gonna like do stuff like that all the time because he feels like that's his that's his image that's his persona i don't that's think he, he feels like that i think that is who he is I, he is going to be himself. He's going to say what he wants to say. He's going to do what he wants to do, and he has fun. He's always got a smile. Dude, have fun. And they're playing basketball sure, for a living. Sure, have fun. You but, know what I do when I'm out when I, when we play when I'm playing in a sport with anybody? I am constantly messing with everybody on the court. I love it. Have what? fun. Yeah, I know. I had no yeah, idea. Pat a guy on the butt, tell him he's the cutest guy on the court. Right. You know, do you the know. same thing to referees somehow. I do. The only guy I've ever seen do that to a referee. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I don't care who you are, but I love I love them all. But like you, a guy comes up, I'm guarding him, I'll stare right at him while he's looking around and say, you have the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. And you, you got to have fun. Why not? You're playing basketball. You're making millions of dollars. Have some fun. And then if people want to get on you because you tweet a tweeter of you dunking over somebody and making fun of them, you know what? Good for you because you did that. Yeah, uh, look, that's fine. I, I he, he can have fun and be himself, and that's great. And, and the – the 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 reason that he can do that is because he's really good. He's a really good player. Yeah. So that's fine. And, and as long as he make and as long as he makes Philadelphia another you know young up and coming really good team that's exciting to watch. Okay. Yep. Do whatever you want, and, that, and that's fine. Although I think Ben Simmons is just as good or better, and, and is uh, is certainly one of the other reasons that that he team is better. Is, yeah, it's certainly one of the other reasons. But that's the thing is they have. But that doesn't a, mean that he can't still have fun. No, I know, but that's the thing. They have a six ten point guard who's like <laughs> a triple double machine in his first full year, and he can't shoot yet. And he can't, Dude shoot can't even yet. shoot. And he does everything, but he can't shoot, which is like he uh, he's he's like Giannis Antetokounmpo, except he's a point guard. Exactly. And, uh, you know, Antetokounmpo is kind of a point guard too, sometimes too. But but those two guys are like you know really tall, long, athletic, and can and do like everything that you know. Um, but anyway, so th- yeah, I could start getting into. All I'm just gonna young. tell you that this team is gonna be fun. It's they're gonna be a lot of fun. You got Embiid, you got Simmons, you got the Marco Markel Fultz, uh, who you know, obviously hasn't done nearly as much this year. But uh, JJ Redick, bring the old man out. How much how much fun must it be to be JJ Redick on this team? All you have to do is stand in the corner. Don't move. Just stand in the corner. When Embiid gets doubled. Coming to you. When Simmons gets in the paint and he feels like he doesn't want to dunk over top of the whole team, he's kicking it out to you. Yeah. And all you have to do is make threes and do your Duke face and throw your triples up and do all the, the, the goose signs with your three ball and all that other three guitar or whatever. I, I still love J.J. Redick, and he's he was he became a really good player in L.A., and he's he, did. He, he brought that to Philadelphia, but he doesn't have to be the same player he was in L.A. I mean, he played. He started and played a lot of minutes and stuff in L.A. And he doesn't even have to do that here. But he's a really nice piece for that team too. And he's a, he's a veteran and he's a really smart guy and stuff. So um, he's he's really good for that team. But, Still crafty. Yeah, he is crafty. I, that's um, what we call uh, white guys in the NBA that are athletic, crafty. <laughs> they can't just be I really mean, athletic. They they're just crafty. He's he's kind of athletic. All right. So but, all right. So Tony Park. Tony Parker. Is an a- that dude's an athlete. That guy, he still moves around, gets in between people. Does no, he's the exact same. He's just crafty. 
<laughs> Tony Parker's crafty. I think that's the word that describes Perfect, him. He's right? crafty. Nice. Yeah. Tony Parker is, yeah. Um, but so what do you so so in that case, what about Manu Ginobili? What's he? He's pretty athletic. I see. I think he he's really crafty and he's athletic. The he's only more, reason you're saying he's crafty is because he's white. No, not at all. He's super not athletic. A, no, that dude's one of the most. He in his day was one of the most athletic people in the NBA. He's crafty because he's crafty because he he gets to the basket and finishes around guys that are way bigger and more athletic than he is. What but, is he six six? Yeah, I mean that's it's a decent sized guy for a point guard. Sure, but sure, but he. But he's crafty because hit the way he passes the ball, his his instinct, his his basketball okay. IQ. That's what makes him crafty. Okay, good basketball <laughs> IQ. Another white guy term for an NBA. No, good not basketball at all. IQ. LeBron James has an incredible LeBron basketball James IQ. LeBron James doesn't count. You Michael can't Jordan you can't have, have an argument. You can't have an argument about Kobe Bryant about NBA players and then name the greatest ones. That's there's no I'm, comparison. No, I'm only talking IQ. If LeBron James is horrible, I would still say he has a great IQ because he has a great IQ. He does. That guy is unbelievable. He's my favorite in the entire world. My all-time. Uh, LeBron James is my – well, Michael Jordan. Uh, LeBron James is my favorite player of all time. So Best well, IQ, best basketball IQ, though, out of all of them would be Magic Johnson, if you ask me. Magic had a sensational basketball IQ. Sorry. Go ahead. So your what, – what is your – so – LeBron James is your favorite. Did you say LeBron James is your favorite player of all time? All time. Yeah. Wow. All that's time. A, that's a big statement. Yeah, it, he is. He is I mean, my favorite player of all time. That's breaking news. That's that's bigger breaking news. Insight into Chris Witt's mind much more than the questions that Where were asked. Where your clippers Adam are? I think to, that's super in, intuitive. I mean, I think, I, I but but I think. But I think people know a lot more about you now than they do about me. Well, what does that. LeBron James being my favorite player of all time say about me? Uh, I, look, your favorite player in any sport of all time, that's a major thing. I didn't say in any sport. No, no, I mean in any sport. Like like if I asked you who oh, your favorite okay, okay, okay. hockey yeah. player was yeah. and you said Wayne Gretzky, then, I mean, that's pretty easy. But um, anyway... It's LeBron. So, LeBron, so, LeBron so Le- is my favorite player okay, of all time. So LeBron's your favorite player of all time. What is your favorite Eastern Conference first round series? Oh, geez. That's a tough one. I'd have to say at this point in time, uh, there's really not anything good. Let uh, me tell you let me tell you mine why you is, think. Is it yours. gonna be the first round or the second round or the first round with uh, uh Boston when, where Boston will play Miami? Absolutely not. Oh. I think that might be one of the worst ones. But it's gonna be the worst one because they're two not good teams right now because of what Boston has lost. For me in the East, it's so easy, and that is Philadelphia, Milwaukee. As long as as long as that as long as they those I, teams yeah. stay in those spots and they're gonna play each other, boy, that oh could get my fun. Gosh, that's and, gonna be the most exciting series maybe of the is entire. Is Embiid gonna be round. back? He's. I think so. Because I'll have to. I'll I have to, think I'll that check that, that I think. Uh, because Giannis is probably my second favorite player in the NBA right me now. Me too. I that think I think me too. So much fun. I and that's another dude that's just going out there and having fun. He, he goes out there every day. He's got a smile on his face. Dude has fun. His his nickname is that's the, the most Greek perfect freak. nickname because he is truly a freak of nature. Literally, that guy is a freak of nature. The only other person in the NBA anything like him is LeBron James, and he is it will easily be there at some point in time. I think. So the Eastern Conference. So so okay. So who is your who, what what Eastern Conference uh, matchup in the first round? Is well, be after, after you drop that ball on me, I have to probably say that's going to be Same the one. funnest game, the funnest series to watch. The other ones, I mean, Toronto and the Wizards. That's that's not even fun to watch. The now that the Celtics have nobody on their team, not nobody, but Kyrie and and Gordon are both out. That's not even that Heat. I don't. I mean, that literally could go to anybody. The Heat. Yeah. Aren't terrible. Let so me, let me ask you this: Will any, will the five, six, seven, or eight seed beat any of the first four seeds? Will I'll, there be I'll, upsets? It, I'll say, I'll say, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. But I think if there's one that's going to happen, it would be the Heat over the Celtics. Okay. Uh, but I think Philly will beat the Bucks. I think the Bucks. Unfortunately, the Bucks stops at uh, Giannis. Uh, oh, got him. Okay, so then, so then, same question in the Western Conference Finals. Who? What's your? What is your most exciting? 
first round. First round, without series. a doubt, is the Oklahoma City Golden State. I mean, that's the most exciting. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what, though. Minnesota Timberwolves are bad. It'd be fun. I mean, I think Houston will run through them in three, but the first series is five, five-game series, right, in the first round? Yeah. Or did they change it to seven? I thought I it was five they, and then seven. Anyway, um, doesn't matter. I think, uh, they, I think, changed, I think they changed it to seven. I so, think. I think Houston. I think Houston runs through that. Uh, I don't know. Portland and San Antonio, I think that's one where you could see the Greg Popovich team sneak, sneak one out. I mean, you know – the crafty Tony Parker and the crafty Manu Ginobili. Huh? <laughs> the crafty. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a very interesting. I think Portland-San Antonio is very interesting. Um, and I think OKC-Golden State will be kind of interesting. Minnesota-Houston might even be kind of. But here's the thing. Before the playoffs even start, tomorrow night, Minnesota and Denver have identical records, 46 and 35 right now. Minnesota holds the tiebreaker, so they have the eighth spot. They play each other in the final game of the regular season tomorrow night. The winner determines winner who, take makes, all. Who, who makes the playoffs in that eighth spot um, or actually yeah. in the eighth or could get go as high as seven if Oklahoma City loses. Um, so, but, but that Minnesota-Denver game I think is awesome tomorrow. Um, and I, I really like both of those teams. I like Minnesota a lot. Yeah. Uh, Car Anthony Towns is is uh, he's he's another guy that's a lot of fun to watch. Minnesota at the beginning of this year was expected to be probably a top four seed, and they were for a while. Yeah, and that's the thing is is they you know they've fallen off a little bit, but they're they showed the potential that they can be one of the best teams in the West um, early this year. And uh, there's I mean I wouldn't be surprised. I certainly think Houston will will beat them if that's the matchup that ends up happening but but minnesota could give them some good games i think so throwing it back to you then <clears throat> out of the five six seven and eight seeds will any will there be any one of those that you see that can uh pull through and go to the next round in the west in the west uh yeah i think san antonio will beat portland and that's i i struggle saying that because portland has been like way better than I thought they would be. Yeah. And San Antonio, unfortunately, they're missing way worse. Their, their, their star, star. Yeah. Um, Kawhi Leonard, and, and I'm guessing he's not going to be back. It looks like he's not going to be back, and that's the oddest. That's that's the oddest storyline I think for me in the NBA right now. But um, we won't even we won't get into that. But um, but I think San Antonio can beat that, and New Orleans can beat Utah too. I was just gonna say that might be the next best besides yeah. the Golden State, Oklahoma City. That Jazz Pelicans is going to be fun. That will be an inter- entertaining That's series. fun. Okay, so on that note, real quick, uh, w- another five, ten minutes. But uh, on that note, rookie of the year right now is between two guys, right? You it's agree? It's between one guy for me. So you're Ben Simmons all the way? All the way. All right. So. And Donovan the, Mitchell's awesome. He's awesome. I agree. And he's, a hu- he's maybe the biggest reason Utah he's is He's the only are. reason. He's the go-to guy on that team. They got Embiid, and don't get me wrong, uh, Simmons is, is Ben Simmons is the best player on that team, but he's got a lot of help. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not the MVP award, which I think is, uh, doesn't always get calculated correctly either because – the most valuable player, I mean, Donovan Mitchell would have to be included in that most valuable player, and he's not even talked about right. because without him, uh, I mean, look at this. Derek Favors, Rudy Gobert, uh, Ricky Rubio. I mean, come on. Rubio they got, David Stockton. A, they got John Stockton's a... son on the team. Oh, that's why I love them. The only reason they have him is because in Utah. I feel like they, it was, uh, he, was, he, he had to, like, they offered him a scholarship. A scholarship. He's a... <laughs> <laughs> they did. They signed him. They signed him to a scholarship. Uh, no, I, I look. Yeah, look. Utah. Th- those they're guys, terrible. Those guys you named are not bad at all. I no, mean, they're not bad. But the, that's not. But Donovan, there's not another star on this team. Ricky Rubio is not a star. The guy's a great he, point guard and has some unbelievable passes. I think Don't he's had his best year in the NBA so far this year, which is a big reason too. I mean, you, right. you know, a, a rookie, no matter and how Rudy good. And Rudy Gobert is 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 still really good. He's too. a shot blocker yeah. and a rebounder. Yeah, so you have to have you have to have more than one piece. I think we know that now. Even LeBron James isn't going to take a team full of other like the rest of his team can't be bad for like him to he go did to the final. When the first time he was right. with Cleveland. Right. That that's the last time <laughs> that happened. Jameson when he's 90 years that's old. That's the last time that happened though. Right. Yeah. So but yeah, but Donovan Mitchell deserves MVP talk. He's not even going to be. He's, he's not. He's in the not discussion, really, in the discussion at all. But what I'm saying is, is that, that well. to me is what a most valuable player is. The guy, 
the most valuable player to a team. Mm-hmm. And in the NBA, I you got to put him there. I mean, th- there is only one MVP to me. LeBron James is the MVP of the league. Without LeBron James on any team he's ever been on, they wouldn't they wouldn't be. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the old Heat teams. Even still, those Heat teams probably wouldn't have made it to the finals without yeah. LeBron James on the no, court. They would. The, the, it's there's there's nobody in basketball that changes a game like him. Um, so, I, t- I but agree. but but it's going to come down to Harden's going to get it because it's his turn, which is bull crap to me. But <laughs> whatever, because I, I, uh, Russell Westbrook. The reason that Russell Westbrook got it last year is because he averaged a triple double. That was the whole talk. Yeah. Well, guess what? My man's doing it again. And all of a sudden, it's no big deal now. Right. I mean, it's uh, but it's 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 Harden's turn. Well, he need uh, <laughs> Westbrook needs sixteen rebounds. Is it tonight or tomorrow night? Whenever they play their last game, he needs sixteen rebounds to average the triple. Is that what it is? Sixteen oh. with two games left, he needed thirty four, and guess what he had last night? Eighteen. So there you go. So don't tell. So tell me it can't be done. It's it's going to be done. Because going to be he done. will stand underneath yes, that basket will. and. Beat people up to yeah. get every. Re- he'll take yes, he rebounds will. from his teammates. Yes, he will. Stephen Adams will have three rebounds, and it'll only be when Russell Westbrook <laughs> sits out for five minutes. And and, and <laughs> I defended Russell Westbrook last year when people were started yelling about how he chases triple doubles and stuff. And and I did. I did hate, you did I, you watch any of the games? He was chasing them a lot. Probably, probably. But here's the other thing: is, he, you still got to do it. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I think it's unbelievable thing. Yeah, I think it's unbelievable. And, and he, you know, everybody talked about how Oscar Robertson did it um, for for the entire course of a year, and that was the last time, and it was in the '60s or whatever. And, yeah. And so that that's why it's such a great feat. But Russell Westbrook last year did it with like it was like 15 or 20 less possessions a game, and in like 10 less minutes a game or something like that. Yeah. It, it was. I mean, he was getting triple doubles in the first half of games. Yes, and that's the thing too is he, he'll get he'll get thirty, fifteen, and fifteen. He's not getting no, twelve, not 10, ten, and 10. ten. Right, right. right. I mean, it, so well, it, it's what we said before earlier. Earlier, it, it, he's got the ball every single. There's 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 three guys that have the ball every single time down the court, and and not as much with Houston this year with CP three in there right. with Harden, but LeBron. All, he's the point guard of that team, mm-hmm. and uh, Westbrook's point guard of that team. I think that that's. I mean, it's that's why these things are happening now is because these superstars are taking over games, which is all why I've always liked the NBA because you could literally any given night watch one guy take over a game. That's the most fun thing in the world to me. Right. All right, man. Well, I'll tell you what. You got anything else you've been you want, you want to get off your chest before uh, let let all our millions and millions of fans oh, know about yourself. It's a throwback. Yeah. Uh, know about myself? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that's where Or go anywhere or anything. You can talk about anything before no, we go. I, I really don't. I, I'm I'm really, really excited for the NBA playoffs. I'm that's super it. excited as well. Uh, so we'll probably be back, what do you think, next week? Does that sound, sound like something we can do probably yep. next week? Yep, we'll be uh, back next week. Figure on a week from now and uh, uh, what is all the stuff that we always say? So uh, – you can get you can get to Adam uh, on the Twitter at the Adam Schmidt forty four. Correct. Uh, you can hit me up on Twitter uh, at Sick with It. Um, and then uh, yeah. the new thing. Oh, the new thing! I almost forgot. The Nosebleeds have a Facebook page. I've never in my life had a Facebook page, but the Nosebleeds Sports Podcast has a Facebook page. Uh, take a look at us. Do you like a Facebook like, page? Like our like our page. Be our friend. Whatever you want to do. Comment. You know, comment, comment message like us. crazy. I took uh, all the notifications off, so I don't know I won't if you can any of poke them. anymore. If poking is still a thing, I'm not a fake dude. I'm super ticklish. Yeah. Do not poke. <laughs> I'm one of the tic- most ticklish people you've ever met. Whatever there is to do on Facebook, come to the Nosebleeds Facebook page and and do that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good, man. So uh, we appreciate it. Uh, YouTube also. So this will be on YouTube and SoundCloud. Yes. Hopefully soon on iTunes. Um, Check it out, like it, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We really appreciate you guys. Appreciate everybody who does listen, and yeah, we'll talk at you guys uh, next week. Peace.